then you will have spiritual teeth and then you can chew on the meat as, as you grow mature. Amen. So I'm talking about conviction and condemnation. The difference is conviction is from God. Condemnation is from Satan. Conviction, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, leads to life. Condemnation leads to despair. Conviction ends in joy. Condemnation ends in sorrow. Conviction makes us want to change. Condemnation, which we don't want, makes us think we cannot change. So think about it. You're here before God, hearing the word of God, you want to grow and mature, and you want to be willing to change. Now, I had my set ways in the olden times when I was younger, 25, 26, 27, I had my ways. But I knew I had to change. I came to this country with different culture. And I knew I had to absorb a different culture here in this country. And uh, I did, and I think I did a good job of it. Don't deny. <laughs> Ask my wife. Praise God. I mean, uh, I used to say the word opportunity, opportunity, and I didn't want to change in the beginning. I was so stubborn, I didn't want to change. Why do they say it that, that way? So uh, finally, I, uh, I changed, and it sounds better to me. <laughs> so um, conviction leads us to a new identity in Christ. Condemnation leads to old identity in sin. You're always thinking about sin and thinking about how wrong you were and you can't get off of it. That's condemnation. Conviction brings specific awareness of sin. Condemnation brings vague uncertainty about sin. Conviction looks to Jesus. Condemnation looks to self. Conviction is a blessing. If you have a conviction about something, By the Holy Spirit. That's good. It's not bad. Because when the Holy Spirit convicts you, you are willing to repent and change. But if you walk in condemnation, after you ask God forgiveness, not knowing and not understanding that God already took all of that away and living in the same activity and sinful feeling as if it wasn't gone, that's of the devil. So conviction is a blessing and condemnation is a burden. So let's get into the words and talk about all these things, condemnation or conviction. Matthew 18, 18 from the Amplified, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, have already been 
bound in heaven. And that's a correct translation. Whatever you loose, whatever you bind is bound. No, it has been bound. Whatever you loose, permit, declare lawful on earth shall have already been loosed in heaven. So, it's already been done. When you loose, when you bind, whatever you bind on earth, it's already been done in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, it's already been done in heaven. So the accuser is overcome already in heaven. Whenever he assaults God's people, we can overcome him here on earth because he has been overcome in heaven. Are you with me? When he comes with condemnation or inferiority bind him loose yourself from the influence his influence on earth because he already is loosed in heaven it's already been done Whatever you're doing on earth has already been done in heaven. God's waiting for you to take the authority down here on earth. He already took care of it in heaven. Amen. Romans 8.1 says this. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And you know the rest of the verse. Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. No condemnation. There's no condemnation. There might be conviction. So I'd say condemnation, no. Conviction, yes. That's a, that's a difference in our walk. We don't walk condemned anymore. Folks, Jesus already took care of all those things. Why walk condemned? Condemnation puts you at a distance from God. When you walk condemned, you're distant from God. You're not close to God. And you're the one who's doing it or letting the devil accuse you and live by it. Convictions brings you, conviction brings you close to God. Close to him. Conviction brings you close to God. Condemnation looks at your failures as grounds to withdraw yourself from fellowship with God. Conviction, on the other hand, looks at sins and failures as hindrances to fellowship with God. And so what do you do with sins and failures? You get rid of them by approaching God and ask him to forgive you. And guess what? He already is given the forgiveness in heaven. All you got to do is accept it down here on earth. Say, yes, I accept your forgiveness. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, he's faithful to forgive us and cleanse us why are you still carrying that burden? If you're still carrying it, that's condemnation. If you let go of it, when you felt you were not doing right, you asked the Lord to forgive you, and then you went on, 
and forge your way through and forgot the past, that was conviction. Condemnation is a general put down against a child of God. You are generally a poor Christian, says the accusation. Satan accuses you and says, you're a poor Christian. You don't pray enough. Did you ever hear that? You don't fast enough. You don't witness enough. Do you ever feel guilty about that? That's, a, that's the accuser. You don't have enough love, joy, peace. Did you ever hear someone say, I'm bad all over? A Christian. Are you kidding me? Didn't you accept what Jesus did for you? And he made you good? I'm such a loser. Did you ever hear anybody say that? Did you ever think that way? No, no, no. Come on. Don't be condemned anymore. I'm good for nothing. Did you ever say that to yourself? About yourself? Better not. Did you ever say to yourself, you're the sorriest Christian you, who ever took the name of Jesus? That happens. I've, I've heard people do that. The voice of the accuser screams, who are you to lift up these hands in worship? Who are you to prophesy? Who are you to use the name of Jesus? <laughs> that's, that's the accuser. The, the, the voice of the accuser says, others are so much more spiritual than you. That's condemnation. We've got to get rid of that so that we can mature and grow. Conviction is very specific. Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Verses 23 and 24. I think I might have had 123 and 124, but it's... Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. That's conviction. When you say, and that's specific, you ask God to search you and find out and let you know if you need to correct some ways in your life, okay? And you have a willingness to correct, okay? So we need to search our hearts, but more so, we need God to do it. Our prayer is, God, search my heart. And you know what his answer is? Jeremiah 17, 10. I, the Lord, search the heart and try the reins. If after you confess your sin, After you confess your sin, you still feel guilty. That ever happened to anybody here? You confess your sin, you still feel guilty. 
please recognize that that is condemnation attacking you. If you confess your sin, don't ever go back there. Because God doesn't lie. If you confess your sin to him, he forgives you. And you don't have to come and see me and tell me what you did. It's not confessing it before a priest or before a man of God. It's confessing it to God himself. It's nobody's business to know what you did wrong. Except God. And he knows it already. But you got to confess it. Now, if you feel peace, that was conviction. Once you ask forgiveness and you feel peace, then that conviction, that was conviction, not condemnation. Ezekiel 33, verse 11 says, Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. That's another word for repentance. Changing one's mind, resulting in the change of direction. That's what repentance is, is all about. Changing one's mind, resulting in a change of direction. If you ever begin to veer to the right or to the left, the gentle voice of God is heard. According to Isaiah Verse 30, verse, uh, chapter 30, verse 21. In thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. You know who's talking to you? God. You think it's you telling yourself, you know. No, no, God is, God's voice is talking to you. Your conscience is God's voice. When you turn to the right hand, when you turn to the left, God is talking to you. This is the way, walk in it. He's telling you the exact way to walk in. Here's an, an example of conviction, Isaiah 6, verse 5. The, the prophet Isaiah sees a vision of God in his holiness and his power and his glory. His glory filling the temple. And the angels talking to each other and saying, holy, holy holy and the prophet realized something about himself and he said in verse 5 then said I woe is me for I am undone Because I'm a man of unclean lips. So he realized, the prophet realized when he saw God in his glory and holiness, he realized that there was sin in him and that it needed to be cleansed. And you know God sends him an angel with a coal, put it on his lips, and then when God says, who will go for us? He says, here am I, send me. Okay, so that was conviction. 
you recognize that it is sin and you take care of it. Okay? You ask God to remove that sin. Now, folks, condemnation is a burden. When you're walking around carrying a burden, hmm, that's condemnation. A Christian should not walk with a burden. Condemnation is a burden. It robs us of our effectiveness. Condemnation takes away your effectiveness as a Christian. Conviction leads us to repentance and brings us to freedom. See, If there's sin and you ask forgiveness and you go on, you're free. The chains are broken and you are free. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. Do you know the first thing that Jesus did when he saw the man on, on the stretcher that they brought to the roof? You know what he, he did? The first thing is he, he untangled that man from his chain. And he said, your sin is forgiven. Because he will tell, before he would tell him, get up, take up your bed and walk. He said, your sin, your sins are forgiven. That, that's freedom. Conviction brings freedom. Brings repentance and brings freedom. Every time you have a conviction and you repent, you are set free. Now, here's, here's something very, very interesting. In the Old Testament, the law, the law of Moses commanded the Israelites, to bring a sin offering, an animal to be sacrificed for sin offering, and they took the animal and they burnt the animal. So the sin, they placed the sin on the animal, and when they burnt the animal, everything turned into ashes. So the sins... turned into ashes. The sin offering was burnt and turned into ashes. So when you ask God's forgiveness, now in the New Testament, what happens to your sins? They turn into ashes. The devil comes and says, hey, you did this and that. What? I, I don't see any. I, I, I don't see what, what are you talking about? My sins have turned into ashes. When Satan comes and says, look at your sins, you know what you have to say? I only see a heap of, of ashes. Amen? Amen? Are you with me today? Amen. You're free. Amen. You are free. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. I will no longer walk in condemnation. And I, I, I meet a lot of people that tell you, you know, oh, I feel so burdened. Uh, you know, I did so many things that are wrong and Hey, who doesn't? 
do wrong things. We all do. Okay? We all do. I mean, sometimes we point at people that they're crooked and they're no good and all of that. I'll tell you what. There's crookedness in us. There's sin in us. We're born in sin. Oh, I was a good boy. I, I, I grew up like a nice grown-up, uh, you know, baby and all of that. Listen, you all messed up. We all messed up. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God he saved us and thank God he cleansed us from our sins. And thank God we understand that our sins that we have committed have turned into a heap of ashes. And therefore I will no longer walk in condemnation but I will walk as a free, liberated child of God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I hear the accuser roar, the things that I have done, and I know them well, and a thousand more, but Yahweh findeth none. I hear the accuser roar, things that I have done, and I know them well, and a thousand more, but Yahweh findeth none, he findeth none, he findeth none. I've been washed in the blood of his son, he findeth none, he findeth none. I've been washed in the blood of his son, I've been washed in the blood of his son, I've been washed. Hallelujah, I've been washed, I've been washed in the blood of his son. There is therefore now no condemnation, sing with me. There is therefore now no condemnation, there is therefore now. No condemnation, there is no condemnation in my heart. So let's sing. There is there for now. No condemnation, there is there for now. No condemnation, there is there for now. No condemnation. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. If you would like to support our ministry, please text NTC Gives to 77977. And please join us each week for Sunday school at 9 and service at 1030. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloom, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.